So warning, this video is very long. I get into a lot of details. I'm not a YouTuber. I probably say um more times than your heartbeat during this this uh, this video. Um, um, I appreciate the time, but like I said, you've been warned, please feel free to watch the video and fast forward. Feel free to jump to the different chapters uh, so I don't bore you too much. And thank you very much. Hey guys, Andres from LGP Power Sports. Today we'd like to go into the Volar Sport brake system that just recently became available. Uh, we'd, like, we'd like to do a short review on it, a comparison to the factory brake system, but also take the time to talk about some misconceptions about brakes in general, big brake kits, brakes on motorcycles, bicycles, and, and cars. So to get started, um, who am I to talk about brakes? So to start off, I'm not a braking expert, um, though I would say I know a little bit more than the average person. Um, for starters, I have a background in mechanical engineering, so some formal training on um, hydraulics. And then on top of that, I have a passion for motorsports. So I have spent quite a bit of time um, reading about brake systems, reading white papers, I've had the opportunity to uh, have multiple calls or discussions with uh, world-renowned brake experts in the motorsport field. Um, so I'm hoping to transmit some of that information to you guys. Um, on top of that, besides the theoretical, I have some uh, practical uh, experience. I've owned several um, performance sports cars, um, cars that I've taken on the racetrack, cars that I've had to change the brake system on it from the factory brake system to meet my requirements, demands at a racetrack. I've worked with uh, the owners of race cars to help spec brake systems, make decisions in terms of size of the master system, size of the pistons inside the brake calipers. Um, on top of that, in my own use with my cars, uh, I've experimented with uh, working with different companies who make brake pads, brake discs, uh, different calipers, um, designing a cooling system for the demands of that particular car on the racetrack. And here we're talking about using temperature strips, painting on the rotor with paint sensitive tape, uh, sorry, paint sensitive paint uh, to understand in use real time what temperatures the, the brake discs are seeing and make adjustments to the cooling system, the scoops, uh, the positioning, the backing plates and whatnot. So, like I said, not a brake experts, know a little bit more than the average guy. I'm sure I'm gonna say something that's wrong. Forgive me, I'm doing my best. Um, so, to get into misconceptions, the first thing when people start talking about, oh, I upgraded the brakes, I upgraded the pads, I upgraded the rotors, people throw around, oh, it stops so much better. My stopping distances have decreased. And that's just not true. The reality is, the main factor, the overwhelming factor that affects, affects braking distance is the coefficient of friction or the friction between the ground and the tire. You could have absolutely the best braking system from a Formula One car, carbon ceramic on a Honda Civic and it's not gonna stop any better than that Honda Civic is gonna stop with the brakes from the factory, why? because the brakes from the factory, from the Honda Civic, are strong enough up to the task of slowing the vehicle down from say 80 miles an hour to zero and blocking up the wheels, right? We're not gonna get into ABS and the dynamic of a blocked wheel and a rolling wheel and slowing down. But the point is the braking system on every car you can buy, most motorcycles you can buy, most Talaria, Surons and whatnot you can buy, have enough braking force to slow down, to block up the wheel once, from X speed to zero. What, now to get into a little bit more details, yes, brake feel matters, right? So do, does a high performance brake system inspire more confidence, have better feel, better feedback than a inexpensive, call it a Honda Civic brake system? Yes, the design of the caliper, a monoblock, eight pistons, 
versus a single piston sliding caliper effects. But for the purpose of this discussion, we all need to be aware that your standard brake system, generally speaking, can slow your motorcycle, your car down from 80 miles an hour to zero without a problem. Why do you want a big brake kit on your motorcycle, your car? It's heat. It's when you need to just not stop the vehicle one time, but you need to do it 20 times because you're at a racetrack or because you're riding enduro single track and accelerating, you have a lot of power and you're accelerating, braking, accelerating, braking. When that heat is generated, it overwhelms the braking system. And the end result is called uh, brake fade. What is brake fade? Uh, several things factor in. One is where the brake fluid itself just boils and you have vapor, air is compressible now inside this fluid and you press the brake pedal, break the levers and you're compressing air instead of compressing uh, or transferring energy through the brake fluid and your brakes just don't work. Uh, you also have situations where the heat can actually cause the brake pad material to crystallize or gas. You have drilled rotors or, or cross drilled rotors. Those help, but it's still a factor that comes into play. Um, you also have a, a situation where the rotor itself just gets so hot and physically warps or is no longer uh, flat and has waves, which affect um, the ability to brake. It affects pad knockback. Um, several factors come into play, but the reality is the main reason you go with a big brake kit is because you're generating so much heat from repeated braking events. Moving on, um, let's talk about the brake system on these Talaria, these Surons, and what they are and what they're not. What are they? They're brakes designed for a mountain bike. At best, a downhill mountain bike. Downhill mountain bikes weigh 40 pounds. You got gravity going against you. Um, so they generate a lot more heat than on flat ground on the street. But we're still talking about a bicycle that weighs 40 pounds versus an e-moto like this that weighs 150, 160 pounds, have a lot of power anywhere from six kilowatts to 20 plus kilowatts, and are able to go downhill, go uphill, and brake really hard repeatedly without the human factor of pedaling comes to play. So they're generating a lot more heat. It's four times the weight than it was designed to be used. So the reality is no matter what you do, you're putting a Band-Aid on the situation. And we're talking about a situation that involves your safety, your family's safety. Um, so on that topic, what can somebody do to better their braking system on your Talari or your Sharon? Uh, the first thing to change is the pads. The pads that come from the factory on these motorcycles are organic material. Um, it's a material that bites pretty well. It doesn't squeak because they're soft. Uh, you don't get good uh, brake feel. Uh, and they certainly don't work well once they heat up. The, the pad material just gets too soft and those are breaking. Your uh, lever will go down to the bar. Um, it's just, it's, it's, it's a Band-Aid. Does it help? Yes. Does it help enough? In my opinion, no. In my experience, no. Uh, next thing are rotors. The bigger the rotor, the more leverage there is on in terms of braking force. That certainly helps. But uh, a factor that comes into play is the diameter. Yes, now there's 220, 250 millimeter rotors. It does help, certainly helps. But the thickness of the rotor, the mass that's able to absorb and dissipate heat factors in. But you still have the caliper. The caliper on a mountain bike brake is relatively small. It has low mass, low fluid. Um, it doesn't dissipate heat too well because some of them are even painted, which is, is negative towards dissipating heat. Um, and they're not able to absorb the energy from braking. Um, so what ends up happening is the brake fluid boils, the caliper itself may distort, the brake rotor distorts, as we'll see in, in later on. Um, but at the end of the day, like I said, it's a bandit. Now, besides my experience, my theoretical, my practical experience with race cars and whatnot, um, I also have experience with these bikes. Uh, I've had an MX-3, I have the MX-4 in stock form and now with upgraded power. Uh, I live in Denver, Colorado. We here in the Rocky Mountains um, have 
sand that's decomposed granite. It's very, very hard, very, very abrasive. Um, my experience as a emoto rider, I'm not the fastest rider, I'm not the slowest rider, but within five minutes of me starting to ride, I put enough brakes, heat in the brake system where the feel was super spongy. Uh, after 10 miles, that lever is coming down to the, to the um, bar. Within 15 miles, 20 miles, that lever is coming down so far uh, because of the heat, but also because the pads are so small in these brake systems and we're generating so much heat with this power that the pad itself wears away, wears away very, very quickly. I've gone through a full set of pads in 30 up to 45 miles. Um, like I said, I've tried Shimano factory pads with cooling fans. I've tried golfer pads. I've got Tecto something pads, um, standard generic uh, metallic center pads. Are they better than the factory pads? Yes. Do they solve the problem? No. Do they meet my demands and of other riders? No. Um, so really that's where it comes down to where I said, hey, I need to substantially upgrade the brake system. I've looked at um, brake pads, uh, Hope, sorry, uh, Hope uh, brake systems, uh, Magura brake systems, and several others, and are they improvements? Yes, but at the end of the day, it's a band-aid. It's still a brake system designed for a bicycle that weighs 40 pounds. It doesn't have the power that we're, we're running. Um, so that's where Volar comes into the picture. I've had the opportunity to meet the team from Volar on several occasions in um, different parts of the world. Um, these people sell hundreds of bikes, e-moto bikes, a month. They have on their staff and are very close with road racers, enduro racers, stunt riders. They organize events. So they have a lot of exposure to the demands of these bikes, the feedback from the, from the, the riders and they have tried everything as well and they said this isn't going to work so the next step is designing a brake system for these bikes and they partnered up with a company called Otto Punto Uno which is an Italian company that had, for over 10 years has been in the motorcycle racing world uh, designing and manufacturing parts we're not talking about uh, stem risers we're not talking about uh, foot pegs we're talking about a company that designs crank cases out of billet aluminum, crank shafts, um, exhaust systems, brake systems, clutch transmission systems. These are high quality racing components. Um, so they have the experience and know-how. They teamed up with Volar, looked at the demands of these systems and designed from the ground up a brake system to meet our needs. Um, I've now had the opportunity to see the Volar brake system, install it, and I've got nothing but good things to say about it. Um, the quality of the machining, the quality of the components, the quality of the hardware is top notch. Um, the brake system is designed for a motorcycle, so the installation, the bleeding is to the quality of a high performance motorcycle. Uh, to be very honest, these brakes feel better than the brakes on my 2023 Husky. Right? The bleeding process was exactly the same. There's no bicycle components and little nipples and stuff you're doing, dealing with. This is the same as if you were bleeding, bleeding the brakes on a race car or on a Austrian motorcycle. Um, the installation, like I said, went straight forward. There was um, no wiggling, no shaving, no adjusting. Uh, everything just fit perfectly. Um, so from that perspective, super happy. Uh, all the clearances, like I said, are, are, are spot on. So no, nothing negative to report, just positive as expected for the price of these brakes and for uh, the expectations that I had coming into this, this project. All right, so let's get into a little bit more detail about the Volar brake system itself. Um, as I mentioned, this is up to the quality standards of a motorcycle brake system. The machining is absolutely magnificent. The seals, uh, the fact that you can get every single component as a replacement part. Uh, you have pads that are significantly bigger than on a mountain bike brake system. All are pluses and in, in our favor. Um, the calipers themselves 
without getting into too much detail about hydraulic systems and braking systems, um, it's important to note out that the pistons on these calipers are 24 millimeters in diameter, right? The caliper, the pistons on a mountain bike brake systems are 10, 12, 13, 14, maybe up to 15 millimeters in diameter. What does that mean? That means that for the force that you generate with your hand, that force is transmitted through the brake fluid and is acting on a significantly larger diameter piston. Pound per square inch, PSI. So the force generated at the master cylinder is applied over bigger area. That means that the clamping force generated at the caliper is significantly higher on a caliper of this size versus a mountain bike caliper. What does that mean? You have endless power. You have more than enough power under any circumstances to apply pressure lock up, modulate, have good feel on this brake uh, system. The next, next thing worth talking about are the rotors. These rotors and the front are 250 millimeters, 220 millimeters on the rear. It's a true floating um, rotor. There is no direct connection between, or yeah, there is no direct connection between the rotor and the hat. There is an air gap that is connected via a uh, circular retaining pin that has a spring washer, which makes it um, not transmit heat to the, to the uh, hub. It also allows that brake disc to expand um, in all directions without warping, without being constrained by the, the hub. And you'll see in our testing, that was a significant issue we experienced with the stock MX4 uh, brake system. Okay, so let's get to the good part, or at least the part that I really look forward to as an engineer. Um, the testing. I wanted to do a back-to-back -back comparison of the stock Talaria MX4 brake system and the Volar Sport brake system. I wanted to know how much better it was, how much more heat it could, gener it could uh, take without uh, degrading braking performance. Um, I tried to do it as scientific as possible. Obviously, this is not a laboratory. Uh, I don't have uh, temperature sensors uh, reading the caliper or the brake disc uh, in live. I had a thermal uh, temp sensor, uh, infrared temp sensor. Um, I tried to be as consistent as possible within what was reasonable. Um, so essentially, what did we do? I got the factory brake system on the MX-4, which is a 222. 220 millimeter rotors up front, 220 millimeters in the rear. I bled the system with Shimano uh, mineral oil. I installed generic metallic pads, which are better than the factory organic pads. Um, I didn't want to go put on Galper brake pads. Are they better? Yes, but the idea was here is to compare it to the factory brake system. And uh, what I did was I went to a called a big open road, uh, took air temperature, the first run. Uh, was done at 54 degrees. Um, it wasn't windy or anything. And essentially, I uh, set up the X9000 controller to 70 kilowatts of power. I set a top speed of 40 miles an hour. The idea there was I didn't want to be looking at the display to see what speed I was going. So I, I stop, I accelerate. When it reaches that 40 miles an hour, you feel the bike level off, crank on the brakes, and just do that over and over and over until um, we have a, a brake failure, a brake fade, or, or something happens. Um, we took that data. We took some temperatures. That night, I came back home. I installed the Volar brake system, bled the system. Um, in both cases, I bled it in the, the pads before, let the brake system come down to uh, standard temperature. And then... The second day, the temperature was 69, 70 degrees. So, I mean, quite a bit warmer. We're going to ignore that. Um, it's in favor. I mean, it's in, in favor of the factory system that it was colder. And it's uh, against the Waller brake system that it was 20 degrees or whatnot uh, warmer. Uh, but we're, we're going to ignore that. And then I did the same thing. I set the bike up, started riding, and just braked and braked and braked and braked going back and forth until something happened or nothing happened. Uh, the other thing worth mentioning is the controller had the regen turned off. So when I let off the throttle, it was 100% the braking system slowing the vehicle down, 
not the motor, not regenerating uh, power for the battery. Now to talk about the results. Uh, factory system from the MX4, brand new uh, brake fluid, brand new uh, pads bedded in, uh, started riding, you'll see the video. Um, within five or six brake applications, you could smell the brakes really, really strong. Is it a bad thing? No, um, just an observation. The other thing I could observe pretty, um, pretty rapidly was after maybe six or seven stops, uh, there was noise coming from the brake system. That's perfectly normal. People have the misconception that if your brakes are squealing or rattling or making something of a noise, there's something wrong. That's not true. The noise you hear are high frequency vibrations between the caliper, uh, pistons and the brake pad. Like I said, perfectly normal. Uh, organic pads help a lot because there's a softer material. Some street pads have a soft material on the backside of the uh, pad backing plate to help. Race pads don't, don't have this material and that's why they make more noise. That's why they vibrate and, and squeal on some occasions. Like I said, it's bar, nothing basically. negative other than the displeasure of the sound. Um, so continuing on with the test itself, by the time we got to about seven brake applications, that lever was super spongy, super soft. Oh, um, oh, oh. The lever was traveling a lot more and it's uh. towards the bar. Uh, it was still braking, just not braking as well. The, the confidence I had in the brake system was a lot less. I made sure every time I was braking, I had lots of clear road ahead in case there was a brake failure. Then on application number, 16. All of a sudden, there's a lot more noise, the brakes are working less. I slow down, I let off the levers, and that front brake rotor starts to dance. It's worth oscillating a good one centimeter to either side. Um, I go to hit the brakes again, they don't do anything because the rotor, as it's warped, is knocking by the, the pads inside the system. It's compressing that vapor that's generated in the brake fluid. Um, so I have to now pump the brakes to get it to slow down. Um, I stopped taking temperatures. Uh, the brake temperatures were around 330 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. This is after a brake application rolling a little bit, taking out the, the temp gun. Um, so for sure, in use, that brake temperature was probably more towards 400, 450 even, maybe 500. Uh, but I, I can't take that temperature. Um, I keep riding uh, on the stock brake system, do a couple more runs, and the brake is braking less and less. The lever is now hitting the bar itself, so I can apply more force, and that rear is, is continually warping, uh, straightening up and warping again, straightening up and warping up. And after about 18 runs, I said, all right, this is what I would consider a brake failure, and I stopped with the brake cool system let the system cool down and uh, called it a day. It's important to note that the objective of this is to test the brake system to failure, right? Now, let's talk about how it went with the Volar brake system. So with the Volar brake system, brand new pads, uh, I bled the system or filled the system with Motu RBF 600 brake fluid, which is a, is a quality brake fluid. It's nothing over the top, um, easy to get, uh, not expensive. Um, went out, like I said, the temperature was 69, 70 degrees, controller was set up the same, everything was set up the same, and uh, started doing runs, started doing runs, started doing, do, doing runs. I got to the 12th run, and the brake system was working fine, feel was perfect, uh, no change whatsoever in feel or braking performance. Uh, I stopped quickly, took some temperatures of the front and rear system. Uh, the temperature was about 233 degrees, which is quite a bit lower than we had seen. Um, hopped back on the bike and just kept going, kept going, kept going. Uh, again, no change in lever feel, no change in braking uh, performance, uh, deceleration or anything. Um, got to like 26 and I was honestly tired. My hands were getting tired from braking. And I said, all right, this is now even more than what you do on racetrack. Racetracks have longer straightaways, not every, not every braking event is as hard as we're applying here. I could probably keep going here 30, 40, 50 braking events. 
and the brake system is not going to fail. So I call that a success. Um, that covers it. I guess the only other thing to 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 discuss here is uh, congratulating the Volar and Otto Punto, Otto Punto Uno uh, companies for creating a brake system that, in my opinion, in my experience, both theoretical and in practice, fully meets the the demands, the requirements of Talaria, Saran, um, even bigger uh, e-moto bikes um, to have the confidence and the safety required to slow down whenever you need under any circumstances. So once again, congratulations. If you made it to this part of the video, I really thank you. This was really long, really boring. I got into a lot of detail. Um, so thank you. I hope it was useful. Um, and I guess at the end, I'm supposed to say like and subscribe. Thank you.